basketball, played by some of the world's greatest athletes. What was the layup? And the set shot. Have become the slam dunk and the three-point field goal. The game has gone to the air. The precision of the long distance shot serves as counterpoint to the explosion of the slam dunk. Today, live from Seattle, it's All-Star Saturday. Sports coverage of the NBA All-Star Saturday is brought to you by Schick, the official razors and blades of the NBA. And by Gatorade, the official thirst quencher of the NBA. And by American Airlines, the official airline of the NBA. Washington. Hello, everybody, and welcome to All-Star Saturday. We're at the Seattle Center Coliseum. And this afternoon, live, you'll be seeing the excitement of the American Airlines Sheraton long-distance shootout, followed by the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship. Everybody's excited here at the Coliseum. It's another sellout. Of course, the All-Star game is tomorrow, but this All-Star Saturday has become an event just about as big as the All-Star game itself. We're going to be seeing both of those events today, of course, the long-distance shootout and the slam dunk. Rick Barry is with me, and I'd like to uh, tell everybody who's not aware of it yet, it's been a great week in our life, and that's because my colleague here has been elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Congratulations to you. It's a wonderful honor for you. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Indeed, it is. To, to be among so many great players in, in a great institution, it really is quite an honor, and I think it's going to take me a little while to reflect upon it to really realize the impact that uh, it will have on the rest of my life. They can never take that away from me. Well, there's no question about it. This man led two leagues, the only man to ever lead two leagues in scoring. And as we talk about scoring, that's what this three-point shootout is all about, the long-distance shootout today. Of course, Larry Bird's the defending champion, but there's some other tough competitors coming in, right? Well, yes, there are. Craig Hodges set a record last year with his uh, 25 points, I believe, that he got in the competition. He is somebody to be contended with. Dale Ellis, you've got Michael Cooper, Byron Scott, two new competitors. It's really kind of a wide-open uh, second place. I think. Larry Bird's got to be the big favorite. Well, Larry Bird was the winner last year. At one point, Larry Bird set the Nets on fire in Dallas. He hit 11 three-pointers in a row. Well, he has such a great form. He hardly leaves his feet. He's got great motion. The other fellas tend to leave the floor a little bit more, and the advantage in this type of competition and having to shoot so quickly in so many shots is really being a set shooter as opposed to a guy who jumps a little more. Well, we're with a man who knows as much about the three-point shot at practice yesterday. Rick was hitting more than many of the other guys in his street club. So we're with a guy who can really be an expert about that. In a moment, we'll come back and we'll talk to Charlie Neal and some other great legends and long-distance shooters. You stay with us. We're live in Seattle, Washington. Well, the long-distance shooters are all launching their range finders here at the Coliseum in Seattle, just beneath the Space Needle. By the way, great weather out here, a sellout crowd at the Coliseum today. You're looking at Byron Scott. There's a list of tremendous competitors. One change, uh, some people, of course, were expecting uh, that Trent Tucker, one of the best three-point shooters in the league, would be here. Trent had some personal problems he had to attend to, could not be here, and Danny Ainge of Boston has replaced him. That, of course, is Michael Cooper. Larry Bird, we said, Rick Barry, was, uh, was the head editor shoulders the favorite coming into this one but all of these guys can hit it what would you say in terms of viewers would be an essence of what to watch for as you look at bird well as you watch larry bird i think the key to it is to watch the fellows who do not leave their feet a great deal the fellows who don't leave their feet are going to have stronger legs as the competition goes on when you have to go into three rounds and you're a jump shooter your legs can get real tired and if you need your legs a lot at the end you're going to have difficulty winning larry bird almost didn't make it through the first round last year as you watch him warming up you can see he barely leaves the floor at all great range doesn't move the top of his body much to get the balls back into shooting position you'll see his great form as the competition goes on the big chance for these other players is to eliminate larry bird in the first round because he got better as the competition went on if they can do well four guys and larry has another off 
first effort, then they have a chance of knocking him out of the competition. But if he makes it by the first round, I think the odds on him get even smaller and smaller as far as making anything. From three to five, he might go to maybe one to five. All right, you know, the slam dunk is relatively new in the NBA when you go back to the beginnings of the league, but the long-distance shooters, the hot shots, have always been with us. Going back to Rick Barry, then going back even before Rick Barry's time. We thought you'd like to remember some with us as we take a look at some of the great hot shots in the NBA. to look at some of the great distance shooters in NBA history and we've got some beauties here today Bird and Ellis and Shrimp and Vandeway and Michael Cooper Byron Scott Craig Hodges Danny Ainge there's Detlef Shrimp of course played his college basketball in Washington he was out shooting some around the uh, perimeter yesterday let's look at the rules the rules of the long distance shootout are relatively simple and if you just remember a few things you can follow it very e easily first of all the competitors will attempt to score the most they can from behind the three-point line within one minute of shooting time each round will be scored separately meaning that there's a first round semifinals and finals those scores do not carry over they only help eliminate competitors to reduce it from eight to four to two they'll shoot four brown balls in each of the five racks they'll be worth one point and the red white and blue ball which cannot be shot they call it the advantage ball until the four brown balls have already been on their way is worth two points if for instance there's a tie as there was last year in one of the competitions the players will compete head-to-head -head in a 24 second shootout and Rick as we look at the long distance shootout that's where the stations will be 22 feet from the sideline to the basket and 23 9 from the top of the key and I believe Bob that the most difficult shots are going to be when they move to B because what happens is you're going from a shorter distance going to a long longer distance and then it's pretty stationary all the way around or the sim similar going around and then when you move back down to E in the short range you have to make another readjustment and that's going to be the, the, the key element how the players make that adjustment all right and now it's time to meet the competitors in today's long distance shootout let's go to our public address announcer Gary Spinell ladies and gentlemen let's meet the competitors in today's American Airlines uh, Sheridan long distance shootout first representing the host Seattle Supersonics this player has really come into his own this season, scoring better than 20 points per game. And he has shown he can really light it up from outside. Let's meet Dale Ellis. <laughs> this next talented shooter stepped in when Trent Tucker was unable to attend this weekend. He's helped Boston win two NBA titles. Please welcome uh, the Celtics, Denny Ainge. <laughs> An outstanding sixth man for the Los Angeles Lakers. This player was known for his defense when he entered the NBA, but has since gained a reputation for his three-point shooting as well. A versatile athlete who can play forward as well as guard, the Lakers' Michael Cooper. From the Milwaukee Bucks, this sharp shooting guard was a finalist in this event last year and went on to set an NBA record for three-point field goal accuracy by hitting over 45% of his shots. One of the NBA's best perimeter shooters, Craig Hodges. Oh. 
This player attempted just seven three-pointers all last season, but he worked on the shot of the summer and has been the league leader for most of this year. A personal reserve for the Dallas Mavericks, a former University of Washington star, Devlin Shrimp. Also from the Los Angeles Lakers, this backcourt star is one of the top shooters in all of the NBA. He helped the Lakers reach the NBA Finals in three of his first four pro seasons, LA's Byron Scott. <clears throat> Making his first appearance in the three-point shootout, this seven-year pro ranks among the NBA scoring leaders every season. Twice an all-star for the Denver Nuggets. This forward now puts points on the board for the Portland Trailblazers, Kiki Vandeweghe. And the defending champion in the American Airlines Sheridan Long Distance Shootout, this star from the Boston Celtics has been the NBA's most valuable player each of the last three years. He led the Celtics to three NBA titles, and has been an all-star in each of his eight pro seasons. One of the all-time greats, the Celtics' Larry Bird. And the sellout crowd at the Coliseum in Seattle welcoming the eight competitors for the long-distance shootout. I talked to Larry, Rick, just before, uh, just before he came out here. And, you know, last year he went through that entire psych job about he's going to practice, he's going to take the 10,000. By the way, it's up to 12,005 this year. He says this year he has not had time to practice very much, wasn't taking it quite as seriously. And I ask you, knowing what a hustler you could be in competition, Bob, is he just psyching them out with a reverse <laughs> angle? I bet you right. I guarantee you. There isn't anything that Larry Bird has ever done in life that I'm sure he has not tried to do his very best in. And I know I talked to Danny Ainge and asked him if Larry was working on him. He says, oh, yeah, he's been working on me. And Danny, of course, the late entry replacing Trent Tucker has not had much time to really work at in practice. But the other players have taken it very seriously. And uh, they're really out to try and dethrone Larry Bird. Now, they paired these guys up to shoot two at a time. We're going to show them to you with split screen. On the right, you will see Kiki Vandeweghe. On the left, just out of your screen right now, will be Dale Ale Ellis. Remember, now, they are trying to eliminate four of the top eight. Even though these two guys are shooting at the same time, they are not competing with each other. There goes the siren. One minute clock is underway. There are four brown balls and one red, white, and blue ball in each station. Nick, they must launch these things really about it. one ball every second and a half or two seconds. Well, they can't waste time. Kiki, you see, jumping much higher than Dale Ellis. That may inhibit his ability to get all of those shots off. Ellis off to a good shot. He's hit two of the two pointers already. You see, he's to the third rack. Kiki's still shooting on the second rack. I don't know if Kiki will get finished. Dale Ellis just now finishing with his third rack going to the fourth. They have one minute to launch all of these shots and most of the time when we were watching them practice they could get them loose and now Vandeweghe is starting to loosen up a little. Remember that red, white, and blue ball is worth two points and also there's an official out there watching their feet if they touch the line before they shoot the ball, it will not count if the ball goes in, just like in regular competition. You can see Kiki's not, I don't think, going to get them all off. And Dale Ellis finished long before the 60 seconds of music, but Kiki Vandeway is going to be only one or two balls short. This one does not count. The two-pointer won't count for Kiki Vandeway, and it looks as though Dale Ellis is going to have the advantage here. Very quickly, we will get the first score. Dale Ellis unofficially with 13, and Vandeway with 12. Now, we're going to take a look at Dale Ellis, and his uh, he only beat Vandeweghe by one, but he did shoot the ball very much more quickly. Okay, now watch his motion here. We'll see how he shoots the ball. You can see the jump shot. He's going down, taking his eye totally off the target each time to get the ball back into his hands, but he really has a good rhythm going, and that's why he finished so quickly and was able to get through in the 60 seconds without any difficulty at all. But 13 and 12, not particularly high scores. They could be in serious trouble moving down to the next round, Bob. Remember the first round last year when Craig Hodges hit for 12. 25. Our next two competitors very quickly are out there ready to go. Danny Ainge, a replacement for Trent Tucker, of course, Danny from Boston, and Michael Cooper from the Los Angeles Lakers. That's Cooper over on the left corner and Danny Ainge over in the right corner. They have one minute to try to shoot 25 balls. Five of these balls are worth two points each. Those are the ones that are red, white, and blue. Shot off Cooper, much more of a set shooter. He doesn't really take that big jump. Gives him an advantage. 
and they have officials standing at the three-point line, as you can see on your split screen there. If they step over the line or on the line before they shoot the ball, it does not count, just as if they were in actual NBA competition. Now, just watch the body motion on these players and compare it to Larry Bird when he cuts up. Notice how their whole upper body turns a great deal. They square up, they turn way over to the right, they come back again, they get a big swaying motion. That's very difficult to be consistent with that type of body motion. When you watch Larry Bird, he has minimal upper body motion. He said that's one of the keys to shooting effectively in this competition. Now the winner of this competition will get $12,500, second place $7,500, third place $5,500, and fourth place $2,500. Everybody else will get $1,000. So even for highly paid NBA athletes, $12,500 is worth a good effort, and there's the end of the music. And again, Ainge, the jumper, just as the last time Kiki, Kiki, Kiki Vandeway, they did not get all the shots up because they take that excessive jump and they can't gather themselves. Okay, now remember that the first two shooters scored, uh, Vandeweghe and Ellis scored 12 and 13 points respectively. We'll get the scores for these guys as we take a look at the shooting form of Michael Cooper. <laughs> and also the uh, anguish of Michael Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> they are not competing against each other head-to-head -head in this shoot-around. Remember that these players are trying to get the best four scores out of the eight to advance to the semifinal round. So we'll get the official score on Ainge and Cooper here in just a moment. We don't have it yet, but we'll get it for you as soon as we hear. Some of the players choosing to start from the opposite side of the court. You have your option. So Danny Ainge had 14. So right now, in order in order of uh, points scored, Cooper is first, Ainge second, Ellis third, Vandeweghe fourth, and now our next two, Detlef Shrimp, Craig Hodges. Four of these eight will advance to the semifinal round. It's Shrimp and Craig Hodges. Hodges over on the left side, and he's starting from the right corner, which the two previous competitors elected not to do and you see that uh, Detlef Shrimp has done likewise. Again, Hodges more of a jump shooter than a straight out set shooter and Shrimp very comparable type of shooter as well and Hodges had the 25 last year in the first round Bob then he slipped all the way down to 14 in the second round and 12 in the third so his legs really start to give out on him. Hodges on the right side now has seven points. He missed, he had only one out of that first basket, but he's warming up a little bit. I always think that from the top of the key here is probably the toughest shot. What do you think? Well, actually, it's a straighter shot in. I think it's really one of the easier ones aside from the side shots. I think the angle shots from both of the sides are the most difficult. Both are at that angle right now. There's Craig Hodges from the Milwaukee Bucks. Craig Hodges shooting 35% of his three-pointers on the year, and he's getting hot here as he goes down the end. He had four out of five on that particular basket. Denver Shrimp about to finish down here. The music plays for one minute. They have one minute to get away 25 shots. Shrimp is finishing strong. He needs this one and got it. So this could be close. They look as though they scored better than the first competitors. We'll get the official totals in just a moment. Detlet Shrimp hitting very well toward the end. Let's look at his form. I'm going to watch that left now. You see squared up well, but you see the jump, the excessive amount of, of air between uh, his feet and the floor. And this is something that can cost him if he does indeed go on to the next round. But also you'll notice how much his upper body, how he makes the big turn to get the ball. And you see the great follow through, a nice camera shot. And Detlef was two on that one. All right, now let's update the scores. Six of the eight competitors have shot. Detlef Shrimp got 19 points. That's the highest so far. Hodges, 13. So right now, in order of advancing out of this eight to the four, it is Shrimp, Cooper, Ainge, and Ellis. And Hodges tied with 13, and Kiki Vandeweghe is out of it at the moment with 12 points. And the low score last year to qualify was 16. Here goes Byron Scott and Larry Bird. Bird on the left side of your screen. Byron Scott on the right. Bird, the defending champion. Larry took three shots before he made the first one. He's hit two in a row. He has three points already. Watch out. He hit 11 in a row last year. He's not hit more than three in a row any of these times. He missed that important three point. And as you said, Rick, this could be a time when Larry Bird could be in trouble on the first round, and he's having trouble from the top of the key. He does get the two pointer, however. Byron Scott doing well, knocking the few in there. He also not taking a big jump, even though he is mainly a jump shooter, but he's having some trouble now as well. Well, I think maybe Bird wasn't kidding when he told me he didn't have time to warm up or practice for this this year with the grueling schedule the Celtics have been on of recent and the many minutes he's been having to play in all these ball games. This could be close as to whether Bird will advance. He does get that final two-pointer in. Unofficially here, we have Bird for three, four, five, six. 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, only 13, meaning that there's a possibility of a shoot-off here if we have a tie for the fourth advancement. But that's unofficially that Bird had 13. Let's take a look at Larry Now, Bird. he was upset with himself, but watch his concentration. Now, notice the movement. He looks down, just a little slight move. He doesn't have excessive upper body motion. He also, as we pointed out, does not leave the floor very much. Probably uh, leaves the floor the least of any of the players in the competition. But after he shot that last yeah, shot, he made it. He was upset with himself. And I think Larry's going to have to go into a shootout to qualify. I think so, because there are three of the competitors. Bird had 13, Byron Scott 9. He does not advance, but Dale Ellis, Craig Hodges, Larry Bird all had 13. They'll have to shoot it off to see who advances with the four to the semifinals. We'll take a look at it in just a moment. Stay with us. We're live from the Coliseum in Seattle. All right, a three-way tie for that fourth spot to advance to the semifinals. Hodges and Ellis will shoot off. It was Hodges, Ellis, and Bird each with 13 points. This is a 24-second shoot-off. Both players having a very difficult time. Hodges with only one basket prior to that, now two. They're making it easy for Larry Bird, and that's trouble for the rest of the field. Just remember, these points don't count to the next round. Only six points unofficially for Hodges. I didn't get Ellis's total there. We'll get it very quickly. But Ellis, Hodges, and Bird each had 13. Only four will advance. The players who have advanced are Shrimp, Cooper, and Ainge. Well, they let Larry Bird off the hook. I can guarantee you that with 13, he should not have qualified and got on to the next round. He has a chance now, and he doesn't have a lot of... Uh, a lot of worry, I don't think. I think Larry's going to be able to go ahead and get into the next round. He is, of course, the last shooter. Last shooter. He the last two players had six points each. Larry has 24 seconds to get more than six points, and I would think that he'll do it, Bob. Here he goes. He has 24 seconds to hit more than six. Brown ball worth one point. Red, white, and blue ball worth two. One. Having trouble from the corner. Two points. That's four points. He needs two more, three more points to advance. He needs this one. That's yes. it. And Larry Bird will advance. That was his seventh point. Just barely sneaking in here. The music's still not over, but Bird, unofficially by my count, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, had seven points by hitting that red, white, and blue ball. Well, that was the one that did it for him. As they say, they opened the door, and Larry, being the competitor he is, took advantage of it, and he's moving on to the next round. All right, so it will be Cooper and Ainge, Shrimp and Bird into the semifinals. TBS sports coverage of the NBA All-Star Saturday is being brought to you by Renault and Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA, and by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. Bob Neal and Rick Barry with you live from the Coliseum in Seattle, and our colleague Charlie Neal is also courtside with a fellow electee to the Hall of Fame, along with Walt Frazier and Rick Barry this week, one of the all-time greats, Pete Maravich. Charlie? Thank you very much, Bob. Pete, uh, congratulations, first of all, on going in the Hall of Fame. What do you think of the long-distance shootout? A lot of pressure. Larry Bird in danger of not repeating. i tell you the truth. If they would put Rick Barry out here, he'd probably win it. <laughs> Hands down. Let me Thanks talk. You were a long-distance shooter. Is there a disadvantage in being a jump shooter as opposed to a set shooter, let's say, like a Larry Bird? Your, your set shooters are normally always going to win that type of uh, shot, I believe. Because it takes, uh, you know, when you have to jump, you have so many things have to be, all the mechanics have to be right there. When you shoot a set shot, you're basically only jumping about a half inch off the ground as, as Larry does shoot. And I think he's really, uh, right now, is probably will win it again. Okay, thanks, Pete. Let's go back to Bob Neal. Thank you, Pete Maravich and Charlie Neal. And now we're ready for the semifinals, and this is great, Rick Barry. We have the matchup of the Celtics. Ainge on the right, <laughs> Bird on the left. Well, they'll be talking about this the rest of the season. I just want you to know that we elect these to the Hall of Fame stick together. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Well, I tend to agree with him. I think he's wrong. <laughs> so Larry Bird, who got in on a shoot-off by hitting only seven points in 24 seconds compared to six from his fellow shoot-off ease, Dale Ellis and Craig Hodges, will now compete head-up with Danny Ainge. 
Ainge on the right, Bird on the left, repeating again. Now we're back to one minute, 25 balls. The brown ones won, the red, white, and blue ball worth two points. And I'll tell you right now, Larry Bird will, wants to win this one badly because if he does, an angel never let him live it down the rest of the season, or in fact, the rest of his career. It's interesting, a lot of the balls that Boston Celtics give, a, give Danny Ainge a hard time because he's such a, an aggressive, showy player. You might relate to this a little, Rick. Well, so did the other players on the other team, so that's nothing new for Danny. So if, if Danny Ainge were to beat Larry Bird here, it might, it might quiet his tormentors on his team with the Celtics, and we'll see what happens. This is going to be great. Two Boston Celtics, Larry Bird and Danny Ainge. Ainge on the right, Bird on the left. There starts the siren. 60 seconds of music and shooting from long range. Bird warming up now. He's having much more success from that corner, but he missed the two-pointer. Ainge struggling. Only got one in in the first track. Bird just took another two in a row. Ainge does look as though he shots off some four in a row for Bird. Missed the two-pointer, though. That's a big ball to get that advantage ball in. And now Bird's struggling a little bit here. I still think they, the competitors seem to have a harder time at the top of the key. I agree with you. The straight-on shot should be one. that should be made. I saw you hit about six in a row yesterday. And then you see Larry Bird way ahead of Danny Ainge because of the big jump you see Danny Ainge taking where Larry Bird with that patented, patented set shot of his. And he got the two-pointer. Bird did there on the left side just then. We're getting down toward the end of the 60 seconds. Speed really counts here. Of course, they're all competing against each other, not just Bird against Ainge. That's correct, because there are four, only two will advance. The top two scores, it could be the same two fellas shooting at the same time. And Both of them released all of the basketball, all 25, but it looks clearly as though Bird won there. We'll get the official score in just a second. Well, watch him here. You see him get hot. There's the first one going in. Larry with a good form. You see the minimum body movement. The second one goes in. The third one, he's really got it down to a sign. He hits the fourth one in a row, and he'll miss on the two-point shot. But Bird improving. Eight. eight for Ainge. For Larry Bird, eight. 18 for Larry Bird. I told you, you got to watch out for him when he gets going, Bob. And that's the second best score of the day. The most scored so far in the first round, Detlef Shrimp had 19. Last year, the high total in the first round came from Hodges, who had 25. I think Bird, with that total, will make it to the finals. I don't believe anyone or any two players will, will beat that. So Danny Ainge will probably not make it to the finals, getting eight points here in the semifinal competition. On the left side, Michael Cooper from the Los Angeles Lakers. On the right side, from the Dallas Mavericks, Detlef Shrimp. Both missing their first opportunity with the two points, red, white, and blue ball. Brown balls count for one point. Maximum of 30 points from if you hit all the balls in all five of the stations. Shrimp now, I think, has just a slight advantage over Cooper, but Cooper hitting that last two-point ball could help him some. Shrimp just hit three in a row on the right side of the screen. Shrimp been here practicing yesterday. Cooper said he also had not had much of an opportunity to practice. We're getting down toward the end of the 60 seconds now. Cooper has five balls left. And, sh and Shrimp just had a nice hot streak on the next to the last rack. Shrimp's going to make it to the finals against Bird. One of these, both of these players would have to beat 18 in order for Bird to be eliminated. They finish now. We'll get the official total here as quickly as possible on what these two gentlemen got. It usually only takes five or six seconds. Let's hold on just a moment and get the totals to know who's going to advance. Here's the look at Detlef Shrimp as he had a little hot streak on the next to the last rack. Pumps one in, another one. The good form as he's pumping it up. And again, he hits. Detlef Shrimp looking very strong. Bird had 18 points in the semis. Danny Ainge had eight. Cooper had 10. So Detlef Cooper has Shrimp, 10. 16. So it'll be Detlef Shrimp and Larry Bird. Shrimp had 16, Detlef Cooper Shrimp. had 10. Larry Shrimp Bird. and Bird for the championship and $12,500 when we return. All right, we are back. You're looking at the floor here for the coin toss is what you were looking at. These two are getting a coin toss to determine who will shoot first. Let's take a look at Detlef Shrimp now. All right, now let's watch his form. You see Detlef Shrimp using his legs well, but he is more, again, of a jump shooter. It'll be interesting to see how his legs hold up going into this third round of competition. That could very well be the difference 
and who Choice. comes out as the champion. Larry Bird with that little jump of his. He doesn't expend a lot of energy, and he, I really think, is, is going to win this competition because I would assume that he'll get somewhere between 16 and 18 points again on this, uh, this go-round. <laughs> so we have shrimp. If you mispronounce it a little bit and call it shrimp and bird, we kind of have a fish and foul. Oh, they're all Am I Bob. sorry I said that, Rick? Oh. You won't let me forget that, I'm sure. Oh. Well, there was a coin toss. Larry Bird won and elected to go first. I guess he figures he wants to get some points here and put the pressure on shrimp. One minute, a total of 30 points available. There are 25 balls to shoot. Brown one's worth one, red, white, and blue ball worth two. There's Bird. Let's count him as he goes. That's two. Three. He's off to his best start. I told Four. you, don't let him in. Five. <laughs> and that's seven points. Then the shrimp is lost right now. He's finished, Bob. He can't win this competition. That was eight in a row before Bird missed two. Well, now he's missed about four in a row before he hits again. Well, that two-pointer helps him a lot, but he put tremendous pressure on Detlef Shrimp sitting there watching him hit the, those first shots of his. He needs to hit a couple of more hoops, however, because Shrimp could still come back, but I still believe that Bird may have won it in the beginning. Bird has 14 points now. That'll be 15... 16. And this one's a big one. Bird finishes with 16 unofficially. And now you see Larry Bird after he missed that last one. He was unhappy. I thought he'd get somewhere, as I said, between 16 to 18. He came on the low end. He may have opened the door with that bad run that he had in the middle. And again, Bob, as you pointed out, the players are having difficulty with the shot from the middle of the court. Unofficially, Bird has 16 points. So that was just our count here. We'll get the official in a moment as we take a look at Larry Bird. Started off a house of fire. Yes, he did. But again, look at the rhythm that he has. Shoots it, little turn, little move. Not a lot of exaggeration in the upper body. Gets the ball to his hands quickly. The good concentration, the good follow through, and the two points on that advantage ball. And the official is 16 for Larry Bird. So Detlef Shrimp for $12,500 and the honor of the Dallas Mavericks. Well, $5,000 difference between first and second. All right, here's Shrimp. Trying to beat 16 points. Maximum total would be 30. He has one minute. If he hits this one, he has a chance. That's Only right. one point in the first rack. The pressure on Bird's strategy of going first may have helped. That's only the second point of the entire shooting. Uh, he's his shrimp. You can tell by looking at him that he seems to be just off of it. Now, well, I tell you, Larry did the right thing. He knew that he could really put the pressure on the young player by getting off to a good start. He wanted to not have to sit and watch shrimp. And shrimp got hot from the middle rack. That's the has first seven, time we've seen. Right, well. has seven points now. That's seven points. But he has eight. He's got to get a hot streak here. Nine. Needs, needs this, this one. one. That's 11. Needs five more points to tie. Has 11. Down to the end of the minute. That's 12. 13. It's going to be close. 14. He makes it to the tie. this one. No! Larry Bird will win it on the miss of the two-point ball at the end. Look at Larry Bird. I'll tell you, the Bird man was biting his fingernails at the end. Larry Bird defends his championship. And I tell you, Bob, they blew it in the first round. Here you see Shrimp. He needed every one of these to tie. That's for 13. This one is for 14. Bird had 16, and it's all riding on this last shot of Detlef Shrimp. It looks like it's right on line and a hair short. Just caught the front inside of the rim on the right side and kicked out. <laughs> Larry Bird, the river bolt gambler. You could also see him in a pool hall. He could probably win no matter what the score is. He just knows how to get the big W. Larry Bird, the 1987 champion. On Tuesday night, NBA, the Lakers launched the second half of their campaign. Can Green and Los Angeles dazzle their way past Reggie Theus and Sacramento? 
Then on Friday night, NBA, Larry Bird and Mighty Boston collide with Clyde the Glide Drexler and Portland. Let's all go to the hoop with Los Angeles and Sacramento, live at 10.05 p.m. Eastern on the Superstation Tuesday. When you want to see the best, it's WTBS at the hoop. Okay, the presentation of the trophy and the check for $12,500 to the 1987 champion Larry Bird at the center of the court. See some of the executives out there who are going to present the Adrian DeGroote of the NBA uh, over on the left side there. He'll be presenting the $12,500 check, and there's the trophy. To our winner, Larry Bird of the American Airlines Sheraton Long Distance Shootout. American Airlines, Sheraton, the sponsors, officials from those two companies are out there to make the presentation to Larry Bird. He won 10000 last year and 12005 this year, and this is how he did it. Six in a row. Well, Larry, get off to that hot start, put all the pressure on Detlef Shrimp, and Larry Bird, when they opened up the door, stuck his foot in and then wedged his whole body in and took it away from him. They should have eliminated him in the first round, Bob said it right he only scored bird had only 13 points and had to get in a three-way shoot off coming out of the first round with dale ellis and craig hodges and once again bird this in this case was just lucky because there was a draw hodges and ellis shot first and could only manage six points in 24 seconds bird came next hit and edged in with seven and then got into the final round against detlef shrimp they tossed the coin bird won and he elected to go first putting the pressure on detlef shrimp and you can see the concentration of larry Bird as he focuses in on the basket and upset that he missed that last one. Well, this is, was a very exciting conclusion as Detlef Shrimp missed on a two-point opportunity which could have put him in a tie with Larry Bird. We're going to be talking to Larry Bird in just a moment. Remember, coming up, the Slam Dunk Championship. We have eight great contestants led probably by favorite Michael Jordan. That'll be coming along in a moment. But right now, you see Charlie Neal with our champion, Larry Bird. Congratulations, Larry. First of all, where's the coin that you put in the sock? Was that for good luck after you won the coin toss? <laughs> you won the coin toss at the end to go against that little and you picked it up off the floor, put it in the sock. Was that for good luck? Well, I lost the coin flip, and um, at least I was trying to get something out of it. So at least I got a dollar. <laughs> you did lose the coin flip. We were under the impression that you won it. No, I lost the coin flip, and I had to shoot first. I'd rather him shot first and uh, to see what I had to beat, and that way I might not have to take all 25 shots. But going first, you try to shoot as many as you possibly can. What happened in the middle? You missed about four in a row after going good in the first couple of uh, baskets. Well, I was hitting real good from the sides, but the top threw me off. I was shooting everything to the left. And um, I was shooting uh, with good consistency, but I was missing to the left every time. The same spot, the same uh, arc and everything. But uh, I got it back when I got over in the corner. I really didn't shoot as well as I like to, but I was good enough to win. 12,500 for the second straight year. You're looking forward to next year. There was some talk of you not coming back, coming in this year because of the back problem. Any problem? Well, I didn't know at the time. At the time they announced it, I didn't know what I was going to do because I wasn't feeling very good. But uh, in the last week or so, I started feeling better, so I just started shooting uh, some three-pointers and playing, and, and I got back into it, and I was able to come out. Congratulations. Let's go back to Bob Neal. All right, Charlie Neal and Larry Bird, our champion, and Rick, there we were. We we thought he won the coin toss. I think our logic was still accurate, however. Well, I'm surprised that he would want to go second, but it worked out exceptionally well. He did put the heat on Shrimp, and I think that's what he should have done, even if he had won this toss. Coming up, the Slam Dunk Championship. We're live from All-Star Saturday at the Coliseum in Seattle, Washington. I love this game. The fans, the noise, the tough shots, even these great NBA uniforms. You can get this authentic game jersey and other team clothing and accessories from this new official NBA catalog. Check it out. This team jack and bag by starter and this cap by sports specialties. So for this $1 catalog, credit card holders can call this toll-free number or send $1 to NBA catalog, building 73 Hanover, PA. Everything comes in all team colors and in all sizes. You can even get this sweater by Cliff Engel and this official Spalding Game Ball. So call 1-800-972-1000 or send $1 to NBA Catalog, Building 73 Hanover, PA. Your dollar will be credited to your first order. So 
So order today so you can look as good as Larry Bird. Well, almost. All right, we are ready for the Slam Dunk Championship. Live from the Seattle Center Coliseum in Seattle, it's a sold-out crowd here for All-Star Saturday. And so far, there has not been a repeat Slam Dunk Champion yet. We know there won't be one this year because last year's champion, Spud Webb, is injured and not competing. We've also learned that uh, Dominique Wilkins won't be in the competition because of his sore back. And that's been iffy all the way up until really just a little while before our live uh, telecast here. But Dominique will not be in the competition today. And that's really too bad because I still think that he is the greatest dunker I've ever seen. And uh, Dominique Dominique had that bad back. He got 54 in a game with a bad back, but uh, it's too bad he's not here. But Kersey, his replacement is my dark horse. That's the dark horse. I'll tell you who I like in this one, and that's the six foot two inch Johnny Dawkins, who led uh, Duke into the Final Four last year and is having himself an excellent rookie season with San Antonio. I saw him play ACC basketball, and Johnny Dawkins has some great moves. Tom Chambers says he was one of the most nervous dunkers out here. Tom Chambers is the 6'10 tallest player out here, and he's never been in a dunking contest before, so it'll be interesting to see how he does. And we talked about Spud Webb, who was not uh, here this year because of the injury, but he was the champion last year, and Spud Webb really electrified the crowd in Dallas. Well, yes, he certainly did. He's got that great vertical leap, and being a small man, it just seems as if he's jumping even higher. He made one toss, and he threw the ball up, and it bounced on the ground. He jumped up, caught it, dunked it over his head. That was probably the most amazing dunk that I have ever seen. He had everything going for him that day. It was truly a remarkable performance on the part of Spud Webb, and I was really glad that he had to have an opportunity and be here and watch it in person, watch it live. And, of course, today everybody has a chance to watch these players live. Michael Jordan, I'm telling you now, he said that he had done some choreograph, choreograph, choreograph work. I guess that's the right way to say it. And he said, every one of his dunks, I said, did you name them? He said, I've named them. Every one of them is the $12,500 dunk. The $12,500 dunk is one of the nicest names. That's better than the devastating dunk of Daryl Dawkins. Speaking of the dunk, everybody argues about it, no matter what, how long you've been a basketball fan, who originated it. Some people think Johnny Green, some people say Julius Irving, artist Gilmore, it goes way back. Let's take a look at what is the real story behind the history of the dunk. The dunk, from its origin, has been shrouded in controversy. Who was the first NBA player to dunk? Experts disagree. Some say Bill Russell, who led the Celtics to 11 NBA titles. Others say Wilt Chamberlain, the stilt, who played with the Harlem Globetrotters and because of whom the NBA widened the lane, thinking the thinner lane gave the big man an unfair advantage. Perhaps it was Elgin Baylor, who at 6'5", showed that the dunk was not just a big man's tool, and who would hang effortlessly in the air, teasing defenders. Maybe it was Connie Hawkins, the Hawk, who also played with the Globetrotters, and whom Dr. J credits as an early influence. But then it might have been Gus Johnson, the first man ever to tear down a fiberglass backboard. In 1967, the NCAA banned the dunk for 10 years, allegedly because of injuries, broken equipment, and uncompleted games. Maybe it was to take the advantage away from the likes of Lou Alcindor of UCLA. More controversy. At the 1976 ABA All-Star Game, artist Gilmore, among others, enfranchised the dunk as an art form. A crowd-pleasing power display, perfected as we know it today by Julius Irving. Dr. J electrified audiences and evoked images of man in flight, weightlessness. Even his peers recognized his superiority. He dominated in the ABA and went to the 76ers in 1976. As he winds down his illustrious career in 1987, basketball fans worldwide still marvel at his grace, skill, and charm. After incidents such as this Daryl Dawkins destruction dunk, the NBA introduced the breakaway rim in 1981. Nowadays, even point guards go coast to coast and use the dunk as a tool. Spud Webb, who at 5'7", even won the slam dunk contest last year. But it's probably aerial acrobats such as Dominique Wilkins and Michael Air Jordan who have elevated dunking to its highest plateau. Where will they take it next?
Well, we'll find out where they take it next in just a few moments. Eight competitors here who will be into three rounds. The eight start eliminated into the four rounds of the round of four of the semifinals. And then, of course, the championship dunk off for the 12,500. Let's meet our judges. There are five judges. Now, there are, there's a total of 50 points available to each one of these uh, competitors. And there is Freddie Brown. He was a uh, real favorite here in Seattle. A Sonics captain for eight years. Of course, you know his nickname, Downtown Freddie Brown. He's now a sports commentator for a local television station. And there's Johnny Green. Some people, as we said, think that Johnny Green, who played his college basketball at Michigan State, and then, of course, with the New York Knicks, may have originated today's modern dunk. Jumping Johnny, they call him. And for Sam Jones, who now plays more tennis than basketball. <laughs> and my guess is he plays pretty well because he looks as though he's still in very good shape. These are the judges uh, for today's slam dunk. And there is Marv Harshman, a college coach for 40 years. Former coach at the University of Washington, led the United States to a gold medal in the Pan American Games, inducted into the University of Washington Hall of Fame. He's retired now. And there is uh, the man representing all the fans, Joe Piscopo. I saw him on his commercial where he's playing the role of a coach, so maybe that'll help him with his judgments here today. Well, that's true. Uh, Joe, a uh, big sports fan, and they said he's really looking forward to him. I saw him in the locker room, and uh, he's real excited about the opportunity to do this, and uh, he's going to be a part of the show later on tonight. Just remember, he's only going to tell you one time. Remember his line from Johnny Dangerously, Joe Piscopo, one of our five judges. So the, here's, here's how this will happen, basically. We'll talk about the rules uh, in just a moment, but one of the ways that this, uh, as, as terms of the the order of the competition here there are three rounds the first round with all eight then the semifinals and the finals now there was a drawing yesterday as you look at the competitors here and i'm going to give you these names in a little different order than you see them on the screen they will start with michael jordan followed by drexler dawkins stansbury harper chambers wilkins and kersey that'll be the order of the dunking competition there are two dunks in the first round and let's before we get into that first round let's go now to Gary Spinell, our public address announcer, and he is going to introduce today's competitors for the Slam Dunk Championship. Making his first appearance in the Gator Egg Slam Dunk Championship, this fine forward is one of three 20-point scorers who have helped make his team one of the surprise successes in the NBA this year. From the host, Seattle Supersonics at 6'10", let's welcome Tom Chambers. The shortest competitor in this year's slam dunk event, this rookie guard led Duke to the NCAA Finals last year and is being counted upon by the San Antonio Spurs to bolster their backcourt for many years to come. At six foot two, Johnny Duckins. One of the founding members of Phi Slamma Gemma, the University of Houston's fraternity of dunk. This personal athlete now dunks to the delight of fans of the Portland Trailblazers. Nicknamed Clyde the Glide for his smooth style. Six foot seven, Clyde Drexler. The second rookie in this event, this man leads all first year players in scoring and hits a five man rookie contingent that helped revitalize the Cleveland Cavaliers. An exciting open court player at six foot six. Say hello to Ron Harper. A finalist two years ago, this Chicago Bulls star missed last year's slam dunk competition, as well as most of the season because of a broken foot. Well, he's healthy again and leading the NBA in scoring. One of the game's most exciting athletes at six foot six. Here's Michael Jordan. Replacing injured Dominic Wilkins, this third year forward is one of the league's best power slammers from the Portland Trailblazers, six foot seven, Jerome Kersey. This six foot five guard was the surprise smash of the 1985 Gatorade Slam Dunk Championship, finishing third. A feat he repeated last year. He's an acrobatic and creative dunker, representing the all-star host, Seattle Supersonics. Here is Terrence Stansberry. One of the bright young stars of the New York Knicks, this second year pro, used to be known as Dominic's younger brother, but he has rapidly established an identity of his own, is standing six foot six. Here is Gerald Wilkins.
Unable to compete, but here today, the 1986 Gatorade Slam Dunk Champion. Let's have a nice hand for Spud Webb. All right, Spud Webb being introduced. He's in the fan stands today. He's way up in the uh, stand, sitting in the cheap seats. I thought he could have gotten a better ticket. Well, not too bad. He's, <laughs> he's behind us to the right. All right, Dominique Wilkins also here. He was two-year-ago champion. Let's take a look at the guidelines and rules for the slam dunk championships. Two dunks in the first round, three dunks in the semifinals and the finals. And in order to encourage creativity, the competitors may replace up to two dunks per round. Here is the order of competition. You get the zero to ten points. There are five yesterday. judges, meaning that 50 would Number be perfect, of course. Michael Maximum Jordan. score 50 per dunk Auto with the five judges. Dexler. And the competitors are judged Johnny for Duncan. style, athletic Terrence ability, and creativity. And when they had the judges Robert, meeting prior Tom to today's competition, Jerry the basic Logan. rules that were handed down by the NBA to these uh, uh, judges were to simply feel it. What looks right and what's most exciting, it's a little bit like judging ice skating or gymnastics in some cases, uh, with the exception that you're, you're not really looking for a specific program that's designed. And here is the first competitor, Michael Jordan, who unfortunately couldn't be here last year because of injuries. And he was talking, you may have seen him with Dominique Wilkins, who uh, wished him good luck. Oh, just like his commercials. Well, he goes with a little tough job. I thought he might go with the one hand, and then he switched it back to two to throw it through with authority. We'll see how the judges uh, come up with the scoring in this, and we'll watch the replay. Michael Jordan, now watch the cup move right here, and the swing over, and then the two-hand stuff as he passes by the basket. Uh, well, I think uh, I'm going to throw my, my uh, two bits in here. I give him a 10 on that one. I thought that was a beautiful dunk. When you look at it in super slow motion, you'll see I'm right, I think. All right, let's watch. What do you think? It looks pretty good, but I bet you'll only get about a 48. Okay, we'll see. Clyde Drexler now from the Portland Trail Blazers. Clyde the Glide. Well, he got it too hard off the glass. Remember, these competitors are able to replace a dunk, so he'll get a chance to uh, do it again without losing any points here. Threw it through with authority. Now, you see, that's a little bit more on the high level of creativity because throwing the ball up like that off the glass requires a great deal more timing. And here Clyde, with a good throw, chases it down. It goes past the basket. As he's going way past, it reaches back and is able to throw it through. You know, he's generally known for power dunks, not so much fancy dunks, but uh, the old Phi Slamma Jamma really does a nice job here. And there you see it again in the super slow-mo. 45 Clyde got on that one. And Jordan got only a 41. We now have the scores up for you. Drexler with a 45. Well, Johnny Dawkins missed his first attempt and just came back and threw one up without giving it a lot of thought. And I don't know if he'll score very high. I'm really surprised at only 41 on Michael's dunk. Well, there went my dark horse pick here from the first round. Only 6'2", Johnny Dawkins. Only weighs 165 pounds. That's one of the reasons he can soar so well. Here comes a local favorite now, Terrence Stansberry. Now, Terrence has choreographed his stuff, and he's going to come up with, uh, I'll tell you what, on the second one. It's interesting to see what he comes up with on the first dunk, but oh, he's thinking about doing the Statue of Liberty 360 on the first one. That's his patented move that he initiated two years ago in Indianapolis. This is the Statue of Liberty 360, I think. And the partisan crowd holding up pens. Oh, we see a couple of nines snuck in there. <laughs> and one eight. Stansberry, uh, excuse me, Dawkins only had a 37. Leader right now is Drexler with 45. There you see the 360. Beautiful control for Stansberry, 49. So Stansberry is our leader in the first round. One of the NBA executives, Rick Welts, uh, said that he was his dark horse pick. He thought Stansberry could win it. Well, he got off to a great start. And here is the leading scorer of all rookies in the NBA this year, Ron Harper, great player for Cleveland. Oops, nice idea. Now, he didn't. He doesn't have his game choreographed, uh, so I don't know what he's going to come up with. He says, well, I just kind of go, I get up in the air, and then I figure out what to do. It looked like it the first time. He changed his mind on that one. You know, Dominique Wilkins said it. He said, in competition particularly, he says, the dunk is not a... He says, it is literally creative because you get airborne and then decide the kind of moves you make. And there's Harper again on the move. Throws it up under his arm. 
goes up for the catch while he's in the air and the two hands over the head as he passes by the basket a nice looking move 45 points so Sansbury still leads with a 49 Drexler and Harper with 45 Jordan with a 41 Dawkins with only 37 here's Tom Chambers oh he missed it nice move otherwise uh, a little uh, whirling dervish there and try to snuff it in with the left hand and Came up a little bit uh, too long on that one. Hit the back right part of the rim. Tom is the tallest dunker here. He's 6'10". You notice, so there's Maurice Lucas in the stands. Got his card. A pretty good looking dunk. Particularly when we see it in slow motion. Tom Chambers. He's on the All-Star team too, by the way. A late addition to the All-Star team. Now watch him again. He's going to do a little windmill action. Takes it to the right hand. He's got both hands on it. Now he goes. There's a little windmill back over to the left side. Throws it through with the left hand as he is underneath the basket and reached back. Comes up with 41. So 41 for Tom Chambers. The leading scorer right now is Stansbury with 49. And Dominique Wilkins worked with his brother in the... Uh, summertime giving him some ideas for the dunks he also worked with Ron Harper Wilkins trying to spud web move he first of all he attempted from the outside the three-point line a long lofty toss and Dominique is right criticizing him right on the sideline big brothers have a tendency to do that <laughs> Dominique Wilkins sitting right in front of our bench here sore back couldn't compete today good dunk by Gerald Wilkins. I don't know how high that will score. Judges have been pretty tough today. No 50 so far. Highest to 49 for Stansberry. And we see Wilkins now on his second attempt. And he was a little bit more conservative after that first miss. Comes with a little 360 move and it looked a little better on the replay than it did initially. He comes up with a 41 as well as one of my fellow uh, Hall of Fame electees, Walt Frazier, looking on. Always dapper. Wilkins with 41. This is Jerome Percy, a late entry. My dark horse. The fans liked it. Of yes, course, I did. think the judges may have been influenced on Stansbury's part because it's a partisan crowd here with Stansbury playing for the Sonics. But I like Kersey. He's strong. He's got great jumping ability. He has some good creativity. As he comes in from the baseline, the good leap over. Throws it through with authority. Comes up with a 48. Now, I think that Michael Jordan's dunk was comparable to that. Michael getting 41. He really I got the short it. end of it. I agree with you. I disagree with the judges on that. Had a 41 of the first one. Uh, Jordan will get one more chance. He's the favorite coming in here, but he's got to beat a 49 by Stansberry and a 48 by Kersey and two 45s by Drexler and Harper. Again, I don't think he's really put the, chore the choreography in that's necessary to get it. I don't think that's going to score high. He's not going to make it to the next round, Bob. Dominique's Dominic in front of a shake in his head saying, no good. <laughs> no good. He didn't like it. And if the Neek didn't like it, it can't be all that good. 47, they give him on that one. That was nowhere near the first dunk that he had. I have an investigation on these judges, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's Joe Piscopo who's causing the problem there. He's the, he's the non but We'll blame him because he's a non-former player. So Jordan gets a 47. That's on his second, and that's his best on this round. Drexler, a little single reverse. Uh, nothing really all that special about it. Best score of the day I wish I could Stansbury. do it. I wish I could do it, but it's nothing special. As he comes in from the baseline, he's just going to jump on through the basket, come back out, and throw it through with the right hand. A little bit of a hitch move, but really nothing spectacular on that dunk. 47. And that got the same as Michael Jordan. And here's Johnny Dawkins, who had only a 37 first time out. Well, pretty nice to be 6'2 and get up and dunk it like that. But again, uh, well, this is a little creative. He goes up, makes the move. A 180, two hands over the head on the front of the basket. Uh, and, let's see what he comes up with. And uh, not unimpressive. He took the ball all the way down to his knees. Dawkins. Got Terrence Stansbury's number on that one. 44 points for Johnny Dawkins. All right, and here's Stansbury. He had the best dunk in the, the first attempt in round one. going to be hard to beat Terrence Stansberry. Well, you see the thing about Terrence is, is Terrence is being creative. Okay, he's got the athletic ability, there's no doubt about that. 44-inch vertical leap, but he's creative. He does some unusual things. Here he goes, flips it up in the air, comes up, takes it down on the double clutch, and throws it back up. Didn't have a very 
strong dunk on that and got a 50. I don't think he deserved the 50, Bob. As you watch it in super slow-mo, he barely got the ball over the rim, caught the front of the rim with the ball. That did not deserve a 50. Well, there you go. Whenever you're having judging, that's why they count points for baskets in the games. When you start judging athletic ability with judges, you get that kind of disagreement. I thought Michael Jordan's first dunk of the entire afternoon was superior to that one, and Jordan only got a 41. But Stansbury now has a 49 and 50 and is sure to advance into the round of, of four. Remember, eight competitors here in the second round will get four advancing. That's Ron Harper's second dunk. Well, grabbed onto the rim, threw it through. He didn't really know what he was going to do. He said that before the contest, and obviously uh, <laughs> that was the case when he went up there. I really think that the crowd is having a big influence on these judges because Stansbury's dunk, uh, as creative as it was, it didn't have the authority going through the basket on the end to warrant a 50. All right, and here comes Tom Chambers. That was a 38, by the way, for Ron Harper, and probably deserved there. One of the weaker dunks along with uh, Johnny Dawkins. The youngsters have a little little bit of a problem sometimes. They may be in awe of some of these great players they're in competition with in terms of the head-to-head -head competition. Tom Chambers had a 41 first time. Well, again, this uh, another one of the local favorites of the Seattle Supersonics. Chambers needs a good dunk here to try and get into the next round. I like the looks of it. He'll get an opportunity here as he missed to replace the dunk. Tom Chambers, a great, as they call him, a great traffic jammer. He is really terrific jamming that ball and all when he drives down the uh, drives down the lane. But of course, no competitive, no defensive players out here today takes away any advantage that might be. Well, you know, one thing, Bob, it, it's uh, he so is not. Excuse me, Rick. He is not going to get another opportunity. I thought he was going to get an opportunity to replace that, but the ruling was no. Reminder: the answer is only one missed dunk allowed per round. See, it's per round. In other words, they get two. It looks like there's two rounds in the first round. If that's what, if that makes any well, sense. Well, they get to a you. chance to repeat two dunks, but only one in each, only one in, uh, in in the particular round. And so he had to miss the first time, and that caused him a problem. Wilkins trying that again. Oh, shit. Not it, throwing the ball high enough. Now this is a good example because what this is showing you is how incredible that dunk of Spud Webb's last year really was, and he did it from way out at half court, and he's half the size his brother Dominique looks on. Not real happy with the performance of his younger brother right now. That's his second miss as well. He will not get another opportunity. Come up with only uh, a 25, I would imagine, the lowest score that you would get. No, 21 only. 21, and that's 21 the lowest score of the day. Let me go back to talking about dunking in traffic. You talk about Chambers. When you dunk in traffic, a lot of times it looks a lot more fantastic, awesome, awesome whatever, because <laughs> there's people around. When you come out here and you do it in front of people, you're not doing anything extra special with the ball. That's why you must come up with the creativity in this contest to try and get the appeal of the judges. Like that. Jerome Kersey looks strong. Your dark horse pick, Rick Barry, is strong. He had a 48 first one. Let's see what he gets here. It could be right up there. He's competing with Stansbury for the leading score, but almost certainly is going to advance into the round of four. Now watch him on the super slow mother. Look at the creativity of Kersey. He gets it up. A little windmill action over to the left side. Left hand. Look how high his head right up near the rim. Throws it through. A 44. I want to tell you something. These judges are not being very fair to a lot of these guys, in my opinion. I really yeah. think that deserved a 48 or a 49, at least. That was better than Stansbury's well, dunk. Well, let's call it a beauty contest. You know, beauty the beauty of the dunk is in the eye of the beholders, I suppose. Now, what we've got here is uh, some discussion among the judges about the four who will advance. We'll come back and tell you who the four for the semifinal round will be right after this. The stars of the past renew their ageless rivalries, plus highlights from the Slam Dunk Championship, the shit NBA Legends Classic. 10.05 Eastern on the Superstation tonight. February 12th. The world's greatest fear has become a reality. Computer Direct from the Soviet Union, shockingly authentic, lost in the aftermath of nuclear disaster. Letters from a dead man. 8.05 Eastern on the Superstation Thursday night. Okay, the judges have totaled it now. After two dunks in round one, the eight competitors are reduced to four. Terrence Stansberry way out in front with 99 out of a possible 100. Drexler is second with 92, tied with Jerome Kersey, the late entry, in place of the injured Dominique Wilkins with 92. And Michael Jordan, the crowd favorite probably around the country watching on television, but not here in Seattle, as Stansberry is, is in fourth place and made it to the round of four in the semifinals. And now Charlie Neal is with the last two previous slam dunk champions charlie okay thank you very much bob on my left spud webb what do you think so far what's happened 
Well, I guess everyone is saving because the dunks they have done look pretty weak. Uh, you think they're weak, huh? Yeah, I mean, they must be saving for the, the end of it because we haven't seen anything yet. That always comes from a defending champion, right? Because you knew if you'd have been here, you'd have it hands down right now. Well, I wouldn't say that. I think Dominic would have it hands down, but uh, you know, they got to show something, something else better than that because uh, I'm a fan and I want to see something now. Okay, Dominique? Who do you like so far? Well, right now, I like Stansbury. Stansbury really uh, came out strong. I think what the guys, a lot of guys are doing is saving their best dunks for the last. I think you had to come out strong and establish yourself early in this contest. You told me just before it started, you were ready to go. I tell you, when you come out and see something like this and you want to be a part of it, you want to go and lace them up and put on your uniform, come out here, and that's the way I feel right now. I feel like... Uh, that if I was out here, I could win it. Maybe we'll take a, a runoff at the end and just put you why, in against me. I didn't have somebody with my uniform. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good luck to both of you. Now back to Bob Neal. Thank you, Charlie Neal. Spud Webb and Dominique Wilkins, two of the reasons the Atlanta Hawks are one of the four hottest teams in the NBA this year. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, I still think there was some very questionable uh, scoring by the judges in there. And I'm going to, you, you gave me a grill great one with that, uh, with that bird in the fish thing. I'm going to give bird you one here. The, the voting is uh, because, uh, maybe it's because Marv is there because it's been, it's been very harsh judging. Maybe because it's a harsh man out there, you know? <laughs> well, Marv Harshman, who uh, coached 40 years in the collegiate ranks, you know, a lot of the old timers aren't real crazy about dunks anyway. And so he may be very tough on them as he looks well, at Well, it's judges. not so much that. It's just the way, like, Michael Jordan's first dunk was much better than the second dunk, yet it, sc yet it scored much lower. We'll take a look at Stansbury, one of the more creative guys. He and Kersey, I think, have been the two most creative so far in the competition. I would think that these two should make it into the finals, but you never know. Stansbury going to be tough to beat that one. This is the man that has finished third the last two years in a row. Oh, he's hand... He's hand slapping the fans and going back over to the bench. He put on a show after the dunk. Again, Stansbury likes to toss the ball in the air, catch it again. Here he goes. The little flip up, the catch, the little pump down, and the two hands over the head with authority. That dunk got a 49. 49. Now, that was better than his 50 dunk, Bob. So, Dominique, Stansbury. Dominique yells back and he says, that's a 50. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is Jerome Kersey. This is the Trailblazers forward who has replaced Dominique Wilkins with a sore back. As you said, Dominique got all excited here and wanted to be in, but uh, I'm sure his team's happy he's not. <laughs> not bad from Jerome Kersey. That should score high. Kersey scored in the first round with his two dunks, a 48 and a 44 for a 92. This may be his best one. Look at the slam cam. It's mounted above the basket. Keep an eye. Kersey comes in. It comes off the glass. The big catch and reaches through with authority from behind. A 50 for Kersey. So that's the second 50 of the day. A 50. There was a 50 earlier in the uh, second dunk in the first round of Stansbury. Now, Michael Jordan told me he had something special. He may be trying to take off from the free throw line, a la Julius Irving. Let's see what happens. He kind of measured it from there. He's going back, back. That very may well be it. And the people are excited. They like this. I can hear his engines revving now. Here's Jordan ready to take off. In <laughs> Chicago. to be a 50 by he took off just a little inside that free throw line one hand and double clutch it magic johnson gives him a nice five underneath the basket as he got out of the way let's watch this one again this deserves a second look michael taking off the patented tongue comes out just just in front of that line look at this the double clutch the reach out and the stuff he got 49 i don't believe it there we go there's the slam camera the slam jam camera i like to call it as you see that little double reach out that if that's not a 50 I don't know who didn't give him 10, but I want to see that judge. <laughs> I'll tell you something. The judges don't have the replay monitors that you and I have. It might be a recommendation for the judges for next year to be able to see this in slow motion. I don't care how much experience you have. It's impossible to tell how great some of these moves are until you see the slow motion replay. We need to get them a monitor. Drexler. He jumped in front of the free throw line and missed. He hit the back of the rim. I think he would have easily made it. He just left a little bit too far forward of the free throw line he'll get a replacement dunk now remember this is the semifinals and there are three dunks in the semifinals that was harper dawkins and jordan looking on the judges piscopo harshman sam jones all looking on second try for drexler and that was a pretty good one too but he was a good foot in front of the free throw line when clyde drexler jammed that one so let's see what the judges think of that in terms of points 
Clyde on the run, getting his momentum up. Looks like he had his steps a little messed up. Then he lengthens them out, gets a little bit too far out, glides through Clyde the drop. Glide, that's why they call him that. But of course, Jordan's had so much more flair, much more creativity as he double pumped with the ball and stretched out to put it in. So 46 there for Drexler. And Jordan, of course, coming up with 49 and deserving a 50. And Kersey got a 50 on his first jam. So the in the first dunk, they get three dunks in the semifinal round. The first dunk, we've had a 50, a 50, and a 46. Here's Stansberry. Well, it's coming down to the most important dunk of the competition for Stansberry. He's got to come up with something very good here because the other players have scored very high and if he doesn't come up with a good score here he could not make it to the finals and he has been one of the more consistent and exciting players thus far jordan and kersey have a 50 a 49 for stansbury first time that's nothing all that creative uh, he had to be a little bit cautious and it may have cost him bob it'll be interesting to see what kersey comes up with of course he has one more dunk after this there are three dunks in this one. This is Stansberry's second dunk in the semifinal round of three. Just goes up and takes it back up over his head. Now that's something that a lot of uh, players can do as you look at from the slam camera. The slam cam showing you what he did to finish it off. And he gets a 45. And I think he was very fortunate to get a 45. But in trouble. Terrence Stansberry off to a great start. But now weakening a bit as we... at Jerome Percy had a 50 on his first one that one was very good also Larry Weinberg one of the owners of the Portland Trailblazers is very uh, happy about that move by one of his players we'll watch the replay again he'll come up now look at the strength and the height that he gets comes up with a little spin move brings it back over you can't quite see it from that low angle but his head was up very close to the rim he does it with a lot of power and authority 48 he's about a, as strong a dunker as you hope to see and he rates right up there with Dominique and his ability to throw those kind of things through and he does that type of stuff in competition second dunk in the semifinal Michael Jordan now Michael got some elevation that time he had his head up there and he did some creativity on that one so Michael seems to be warming up Let's look at it in super slow motion. Michael Jordan had a, a 50 on his first dunk. This is his second. The great elevation with the good strong one hand. Again, the double clutch move. He ducks his head to get by the rim in the net, throws it back through as he did a little bit of a 180 spin on it as well. And he gets a 49 again. So two 49s for Michael Jordan. And he's starting to come alive here in the second round. He's got a, well, he had a 50 in the first one and a 49 in the second one. And is leading right now. Kersey has a 50 and a 48. They changed it to a 50 to one. I thought he had 49. It is 49. Check this. He has 249s. Drexler now comes through and doesn't do anything all that creative on that particular move. Although a lot of people would like to be able to throw it through like that. That was not anything special. As Spud Webb pointed out, you have to do something out of the ordinary. Well, watch Drexler again. Just comes in from the left side, goes up in the air, just takes a little roll move and throws it through over the right side. Nothing Here's special. And the slam cam shows you exactly how he finished it off. So Drexler in danger of being eliminated. He has a 46, and that one was a 45. And looks like comes Stansberry. Looks like Jordan right now and uh, Kersey have the advantage. Stansberry. Pretty strong. Now you see he has a flair about him, Bob. That's just that little toss in the air to take your hand off the ball to re-catch it again. Catches the, the, the eye of the judges. It makes you think about what he's doing. He does a nice move on this dunk as he comes up. We'll see it finish off. The ball up in the air. He catches it. Does a little clutch move. Throws it through with two and comes up with a big 50. And he needed that one. And that puts the heat now on Kersey and Jordan to come up with some big dunks. The move by Stansbury who had that 45 on the second one. All right, this is Bob Neal, Rick Barry with you. We're in the semifinals. We're in the third dunk. Looks like oh, Kersey might be going round. for the long range jump. Jerome Kersey, the late replacement for Dominique Wilkins, the winner two years ago, Kersey from Portland. Kersey looked back in amazement, couldn't believe that he didn't dunk that one through, but he did indeed step inside of the line. Now, I don't think this is his specialty, trying to do something here that shows the, the versatility that a Michael Jordan has and, and the ability to hang in the air and to glide to the basket. Kersey's more of a power man. I think he should do more power moves inside with a lot of spins, throwing the ball up like Stansbury does. This would get more attention from the judges because of the authority he throws it through. When you go from this far out, Bob, he can't throw it through with a lot of authority. Well, I tell you, he took a chance there, Bob. 
after the miss, he needed a good one, and to throw it off the glass, the timing had to be perfect, and he came through with a very strong, powerful dunk. As you can see, when he gets in close, he can throw it through very, very strongly. There's the toss, the catch, brings it over as he passes the basket to throw it through. Comes up with a 49. That's going to make it tough for Stansbury. Michael Jordan needs a good dunk here, and it'll be he and Stansbury in the finals. Or it could be I mean, Ian Kersey, Kersey. I'm sorry, exactly. Ian Kersey. Kersey in the three dunks here in the semis has a 50, a 48, and a 49. Just to update you on where it is. Jordan has a 49 and a 49. Terrence Stansberry, a 49, 45, and a 50. And Drexford probably in danger of being eliminated, 46 and 50. <laughs> oh, I love it. He went straight to the basket just like he was floating on air. Turned sideways, gave a little little move to the side, and floated sideways to throw it in. Will they give Michael Jordan a 50? He I hasn't got one yet today. There it is. There he goes. He goes in straight, goes up in the air. Now he's sideways. Look at the air. Look at the hang time. Look at the flying motion. <laughs> Look at his head above the rim. They show. Here he is again. The fans reacted to the replay on the screen here. Look at him hang and fly. Look at his head. <laughs> that is Air Jordan at his best. It looked like he was in an F-16 that time. Dominique holding up his hands. The finger is one for Michael Jordan after that one. All right, now the fourth competitor here in danger of being eliminated. Probably already is, unless he, well, he is, really. Clyde Drexler, even with a 50, couldn't get it here. But Drexler would certainly like to, uh, as he walks back here, he goes down to talk right in front of our booth to Dominique Wilkins on the left and Spud Webb on the left side of your screen. See if we can pick up the sound here. I don't know if we can get it or not. Well, we had a good shot there, except for Tim Rockwood, one of our uh, workers, had his big curly head in the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dominique, with some instructions. He may be saying it's too late, Clyde. <laughs> Charlie Neal's there with a the microphone. Maybe we can go to Charlie real quickly here. Charlie, see if you can ask Dominique what he told him before we look at this. Yeah. Dominique, what did he say to you? What did he ask what can he, do, he asked me what can he do next. I told him uh, to, to jump straight in there off of two legs and do a, a windmill. Guaranteed 50. Guaranteed, Guaranteed 50. 50. No yeah. question about it. Yeah, that's if you've got a 48-inch vertical jump. <laughs> Unfortunately, Clyde isn't quite that good. All right, yeah, no problem for Dominique or Jordan. Let's see here. Clyde Drexler. See, it's a nice move, Bob, but nothing extraordinary. Now, if he had thrown the ball in the air like Stansbury did and then caught the ball, it would have had a lot more flair to it. It would have caught the eye of the judges. Here we watch him again coming from the right side. Drexler will do a little spin move with it, takes it up, rolls it to the right, back to the left, up and through with two. You know, a very nice dunk, but 45 points he comes away with. Okay, here's what we have now. The semifinalists are going to be Michael Jordan with 148 points in the semifinal round, and Jerome Kersey with 147 will dunk it off with three dunks in the final round for $12,500 when we return to the Coliseum in Seattle, Washington. The Converse weapon, that's a shoot, that's magic to do what he was born to do. It may be so, but that's not all they let Isaiah play like he's ten feet tall. Or the kind of moves that never fail, the weapon's the choice of Kevin McHale. The same is true for Mark McGuire. When I wear a weapon, I'm on fire. Well, what can the weapons do for King? Why, I can do just about anything. You already know what you did for me. What? what? I walked away with the MVP. The uh, Converse weapon, the number one weapon in the NBA. CBS Sports coverage of the NBA All-Star Saturday is being brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there is only one light beer. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. Bob Neal and Rick Barry with you at the Coliseum in Seattle, ready for the championship round of the 1987 Slam Dunk Competition. And we, why we look at the coin, let's stay with the coin toss just for a second here. We have the coin toss in the middle. That'll see who will win and then have the choice of dunking first or second. So the coin toss has happened, I guess. We'll check on it in a moment and find out who won that. It'll give me a moment to remind you that this program is authorized under rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. Now, we're still not sure who won the toss, but we do know that Kersey is first. Very good, Bob. We're not going to fall into that trap again, are we? <laughs> <laughs> you fool me once. <laughs> Jerome Kersey. 
little pump and a little windmill action on this. We'll watch it in the super slow-mo. Percy straight at the basket, using that great jumping ability and strength that he has. Goes up in the air, little windmill, takes it around and throws it through. Nothing extraordinary, I don't think, Bob. He comes up with only 46, so a great chance for Michael Jordan to really put the heat on Jerome Percy if he can come through with another one of those airborne specials. Well, Air Jordan, who used every bit of the O'Hare Field runway for his uh, uh, leaving from the free throw line 49 dunk is going to start this time over on the right side so Kersey with a 46 out of 50 hello <laughs> how you going to keep him down on the ground after he scored a 50 I don't know Michael Jordan should get a 49 or a 50 on that one I would guess well he's gonna go and make a little 180 move as he heads towards the basket he'll turn and get his back to the basket there's the spin move now he floats he glides and he throws it through with power as he passes by 48 for Michael Jordan and once again the judges being very tough on the competitors I think maybe the judges expect too much of Michael Jordan and now Clyde Drexler about to go here we're gonna stand by with Charlie Neal uh, excuse me a uh, Jerome Kersey and he misses Trying Remember, to they can replace a dunk here. Trying to copy uh, Jordan on that one. Let's, there's uh, Dominique, Wil uh, Dominique Wilkins and Magic Johnson. They're right at the uh, at the post underneath the hoop. It's still shaking from that last miss by Kersey. Let's pick up now. Here's his replacement dunk. A little bit more with the power. Now what Jerome Kersey needs to get a little more creativity in his dunks to really try and help himself. But I'm nice to see my dark horse candidate here in the finals, though. We'll watch the super slow-mo replay. As he comes up, again, the little pump move and then the spin, but you can see how high he gets and the power that he throws the ball through with. A 45. So Kersey, he got three dunks here, 46 and a 45. And Jordan on his first one had a 48. Real quickly before Jordan goes, Charlie Neal's with Spud Webb. Spud, what do you think about Jordan so far? What do you think of what's happening so far, Spud, with Michael? Well, he uh, took, took his dunk into another notch and he's, you know, taking more difficult dunks. You like that one? Oh, that was great. Uh, I wish I had the hands to do that. All right, Bob. So that was Michael Jordan's second one. And Rick Barry, let's take a look at it now. It's super slow-mo. Well, here we go again. Michael Jordan getting going down the runway, getting ready for takeoff. Takes off right, you see, at the bottom of the circle. Up in the air now. To see the little move, the double clutch. Back up as he floats by. Here he is from the slant jam camera and throwing it through. But look at the skill, the style that he has. 48 he gets again. The judges real tough here in this final round. Well, Kersey needs a 50. And even with a 50, it would put him in trouble. He has 91 points so far to 96 for Jordan. Not going to do it, I'm afraid, Bob. And we'll see if Michael Jordan tries to come up with something special here, knowing full well that he doesn't need anything extraordinary. I don't know if he'll take a chance on this one as we watch this final dunk on the part of Jerome Kersey who with late notice coming into the competition, replacing Dominic Ooh. Wilkins, has done a nice job. And they give him a 49 on that one. So he has 140 total after getting that. 140. Now, Dominique has 96. Uh, excuse me, Michael Jordan has 96. Michael Jordan with 96. I said Dominique. Dominique standing down there. He probably would have higher than that, at least uh, if he performed like he did a couple of years ago. Here comes Michael Jordan for his third and final dunk. He gets a replacement. And what he does that's so neat and it really catches the, I think, the uh, excitement of the crowd is when he jumps up, he does that lean in. He gets his body almost sometimes perpendicular to the floor. As you watch the replay on this miss, you see him jump. Now, look at that lean in. You see how he just leans forward. It's like Superman flying through the air. Well, that's almost a repeat of the one that he came in from the side, turning sideways on it, but he needed to make sure he made it. And uh, Akeem Olajuwon coming up with the score there for Michael Jordan. All right, let's look at it in super slow-mo. It's almost impossible for Michael Jordan to lose. He gets a 50 on his third dunk. There he goes on the takeoff. He goes sideways. Now the lean-in move. You see how he looks like Superman flying sideways through the air as he hooks it in from another angle. Watch the lean-in. Now he'll be almost parallel. We'll see the completion of it on the slam jam camera as you see how high he got up over the rim. So Michael Jordan is our winner with 146 points. In the final round, he had a dunk of 48, 48, and 50. Jerome Kersey, the late entry, the dark horse candidate of Rick Barry, got all the way to the finals. But he had a 46, a 45, and a 49 to finish with a total of 140 in the championship round. And surprising almost nobody, Michael Jordan 
We might say, though, that Michael started very slowly. His first dunk of the day, only a 41. But after that, he had two 50s on the way with a couple of 49s and 48s. And Michael Jordan now at center court, ready to receive his trophy and a check for $12,500. So Michael Jordan will, by the way, will get that uh, trophy and the check here. The second place uh, gets $7,500. So Jerome Kersey's trip uh, just a few miles north from Portland to enter the competition today won't hurt his pocket, James. Third place gets $5,500. Fourth place, $2,500. And all the competitors from fifth through eighth will receive $1,000. But Michael Jordan is a deserving champion today, Rick Barry. Well, indeed he is. He said that he had the $12,500 dunks ready, and that's exactly what he came through with. Take another look at one of the dunks that led to his championship here in Seattle as he comes through just goes over the free throw area and there's that stretch out the double clutch with the one hand palm and he throws it through and that did not believe it or not get a 50 as the victorious Michael Jordan holds up the victor's trophy that is $12,500 richer that's Bill Schmidt on the left by the way the director of sports marketing for Quaker Oats Company and makers of Gatorade and Adrian DeGroote was on the right there the NBA properties manager and the final standings of the Gatorade slam dunk championship Michael Jordan with 146 points out of uh, a possible 150 in the championship round defeats Jerome Kersey it was Terrence Stansberry and Clyde Drexler finishing in third and fourth place and one more time Let's look at Air Jordan. Unbelievable. We'll be back to the Coliseum in Seattle, Washington, right after this. The Converse weapon. That's the shoot. That's magic. Do what he was born to do. Maybe so, but that's not all. They let Isaiah play like he's ten feet tall. For the kind of moves that never fail, the weapon's the choice of Kevin McHale. The same is true for Mark McGuire. When I wear weapons, I'm on fire. Well, what can the weapons do for King? Why, I can do just about anything. You already know what you did for me. What? what? I walked away with the MVP. The uh, Converse weapon. The number one weapon in the NBA. Back at the Coliseum in Seattle, and now Charlie Neal with the 1987 champion of the slam dunk competition, Michael Jordan. Thank you very much, Bob, and congratulations, Michael. Last year, the broken foot kept you out of this, but you didn't disappoint the crowd that came to watch you do, this, do your thing today. Well, I'm very happy that I you know, got the chance to make it to the semifinals because in the first two dunks, I didn't know if I was going to make it. I was just fortunate that the other two guys you know, missed a few, uh, few dunks, and it, it allowed me to get into the semifinals. Creativity. Did you work on this particular competition? Because you always have to come up with something a little better each time around. I worked on one dunk, and that was bouncing off the floor and hitting the backboard and then trying to dunk it. And you see, I messed that one up. So that's the only one I missed. So from that point on, I just, you know, I just went on in my mind and, and just tried to create something while I was in the air. Coming into the competition, knowing Dominique was not in it, and of course, Bud, the defending champion, did that give you a little psychological edge? Uh... No, not really, because I didn't know what Harper could do. I heard a lot about him, and, you know, Johnny Dawkins, I've seen him in Duke quite a bit. And, you know, Terrence, Terrence Stanberry, Stansberry was playing here at home. I mean, he was back at home, and it seems as though when I compete against him, he's always on the home court. So I knew he was going to be a great competitor. What was your toughest dunk? We're going to look at one of your, the replays of one of your dunks right now. We can't really see it from our monitor, but it is uh, being played right now. What I, just talk about the... Uh, what do you think was the toughest? Well, I, you know, I really felt motivated, and the crowd got me pumped up a little bit once I got in the air. And when I did get in the air, I was just—it was just going to be a basic, basic dunk, actually. And you know, once I got up there, I saw how, how I was. I pumped it, and then I went in and threw it hard again. Okay, now where did Michael Jordan go tomorrow? You're going to be in the All-Star game. You've got to be rooting for your team to win, and, and you've got to be thinking about MVP honors. Well, uh, for sentimental values, I, I want Dr. J to win the MVP, hopefully. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm just happy to be out there competing with him. 
you I, I really owe this gratitude for me to come here and playing to my teammates in Chicago for really checking me the screens, getting me the ball, and you know having it the year that I'm having. So I, I did tell them if I win the dunking contest, I would split it up 12 ways. Earlier in our con in our uh, telecast, we showed the history of the dunk and how it evolved and where it's gone to over the years, going back to Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, and up to its present day. Where can it go from here? I mean, are they going to have to move the basket up a little higher for you guys? Well, I don't know. I think it's still going to expand because more and more you're getting talent, talented players that can come in and create all kind of dunks. And it's just going to make the entertainment of basketball even greater. Okay, Michael Jordan, always a pleasure to watch. Congratulations. Once again, good luck tomorrow in the All-Star Game. Now let's go back to Bob Neal. Okay, thank you, Charlie, and congratulations, Michael Jordan. And we've got all kinds of viewers here. There's Larry Bird. Moses you Malone just saw before Moses that. Malone, of course, ready to play in the All-Star game tomorrow. We were talking to Michael Jordan about the history of the dunk, and we earlier saw a, a piece of video presentation about the history and where it originated and from whence it came, and it's gone now to the point just a couple of years ago a lot of these players started naming their dunks. But there are those who don't think it's all that difficult. I'm certainly not one of them. Let's take a look at this report with Paul Ryden on the names of some of the great dunks. The slam dunk, it lives by many names. The one hand jam, the cradle, the windmill, the 360, the magic to Cooper Cooper Loop, the tomahawk, the Daryl Dawkins monster glass blaster, the two scoop to hoop, even the highly illegal over the chair and through the air. Each one lovingly crafted and masterfully executed. But just how hard is it, really? With me now is Cliff Levingston of the Atlanta Hawks, who's here to share some insight into the wonderful world of dunking. Cliff, glad to have you with us. Well, thank you. I'm glad you invited me by to share my insights on slam dunking. Well, with all respect to Cliff and the rest of the NBA, let's get one thing straight. Right now, dunking really isn't as hard as it looks. I mean, try it sometimes. It's really not that hard. All it takes is a good pair of shoes, a little practice. It's really not as hard as it looks, but we'll humor Cliff, okay? Uh, so, Cliff, uh, what's your first secret of dunking? Well, first of all, you have to have a vertical leap. Um, you have to be able to get above the rim. and You know, mine's a 42. What is yours? Y excuse me for a second. About nine inches, my vertical leap. I say you get in a game situation, the adrenaline's pumping and all that. I figure you multiply it by four. I can get off the ground. I'd say vertical leap about 36 inches, three feet. What's the secret number two? Well, you have to be able to palm a ball. Um, so you can, you know, move it around and dip and jab and punch it in the basket. Well, that's a myth if I ever heard one. Who says you have to be able to do this? I can't do that, but I can certainly keep my hand on top of the ball as it's going down through the basket. No sweat. What's number three? You have to have that hang time. So when you get up in the air, you can move your body this way, this way, and pump it. And, or sometimes punch in the basket like that. Stay up for about how long? Oh, you need to stay up about two two seconds, two, one second, two seconds, just as long as enough to, to be a little free. No problem. I've hung around TBS for five years. I can certainly hang around a basket for a second or two. It's really not as hard as it looks. Let's uh, go out from the court. Let's try it. Man, yeah. you... Sure. Wait, well, hey, I've said it's not that hard. Let's go, let's go do it. <laughs> ah, close. Maybe we need to lower the basket a little bit. I know, they were supposed to, but, uh, I mean, I didn't say that. Um, I'll get it. I'll get it. No problem. Ah, oh, nuts! Ah! Well, there's definitely something wrong with the... It's either the net or the, the ball. Okay, three things. Vertical leap, palming, and hang time. Okay. Ah! Oh, did he say something about the wind? All right, two-handed behind them, back, well. Well, it doesn't matter, you, you get the point. Next time we're together, we'll talk about the three-point shot, and I'll show you that that's not really as hard as it looks. Paul Ryden, TBS Sports. Well, Paul Ryden, the three-point shot is also as hard as it looks. Trust me, uh, you're looking now at the aftermath of the crowd, a sellout crowd at the Coliseum in Seattle, Washington, following the long-distance shootout, which was won by Larry Bird again. So what's big news? And the slam dunk championship won by Air Jordan, and they were both the favorites, who both had to come from behind to win today because they did not start uh, really uh, on fire. Uh, but we were talking about uh, during the slam dunk competition, Charlie Neal's on the floor right now. Charlie, we were talking during the slam dunk competition about the, the very tough 
judging that took place today. And I think the guy here who may have instigated a lot of that is with you now. And let's ask him some hard questions. Yes, sir, Charles. Ask him if he gave Jordan a, a, a 10 or a 9 on the one he got 49 when he ran from all the way down. I want to know. <laughs> Rick Barry is really giving you the blues over there. You are one of the judges. I'm with Joe Piscopo right now. I gave everybody a 10. Give me a break. <laughs> he said, did you give everybody a 10? Can I say that legally? Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> sure I did. Everybody so, got a 10. So what do you know about a 9 or an 8, I know, right? man. Like, I can't come near that basket. I can't touch the net. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to, like, give some guy a 7. And so I'm sitting next to these judges, you know, these experts. And I'm going, yep, that's a 10. Yep, that's a 10. That's a 10. And then they're getting, like, 45. The crowd's booing, saying, hey, Piscopo. Say, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to judge anybody. You really enjoyed this, though, did you? Yeah, I had a good time. You know, actually, uh, Charlie, I'm a baseball freak, you know? Mm -hmm. A sports fan and a baseball freak. And I would, wouldn't you love to see it, like, a baseball weekend like this. The NBA put this package together great. Wouldn't that see like a home run derby, you know, or something like that? Or who could take the, as many fastballs in the head, you know? It's just little contests like that for baseball would be fun. Uh, aside from what you did today, the NBA, you're involved with the light uh, commercials yeah, and things yeah. like that. You, you're enjoying that too, aren't you? Yeah. You're having some fun and yeah. you're, you're playing some bad dude. <laughs> yeah. The, well, you know, the, the Miller Light spots were wild, man, because, you know, it's like... Yeah, I didn't expect them to blossom into what they're blossoming into, and I think it, this is like a fringe benefit of that. They said, Joe, come on down. I'm emceeing the show tonight, you know, uh, with Jeffrey Osborne, and um, it's just wild. It's just, well, from beer commercials, what can I tell you? From Saturday Night Live to what you're doing now, then you've got some things in the future for some TV. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you can talk about and what you yeah. can't, but maybe uh, you can expound on a little bit. Yeah, I'll be on television with a special or something... Uh, even a little more ambitious in the uh, springtime, you know. But uh, we just finished a movie script we're doing. So I'm working, and I'm at a point in my life now. Um, where did we last see each other? Yankee Stadium. Yes, it was yeah. Yankee Stadium. And it was cool, but I think I was I was just off Saturday Night Live then. My head was like a little scab. Now I'm like chilled out completely, and I'm just having fun. And I, like, I don't know, in the past, I would have never came here. And if I had performed tonight, I would have been in my room saying, okay, let me get my lines down. <laughs> but now I'm watching Air Jordan be like spectacular, you know, so it's fun. Who did you like out of all? I mean, of course, Michael won. What, what did great. you like? What did you like? Is anything? Uh, let's say one of the underdogs that impressed you. Stansberry, I thought was great. I really did because he was great with the crowd. He walked out. Did you see that? This was live. You guys covered it live, right? right? He walked all the way out mid court. You know, kind of checked out the crowd. They're all screaming. Showmanship alone got him a ten in my book. Only you would know that, right? All the entertainer in the true sense of the word. Now let's go back to Bob Neal. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Charlie Neal and his buddy Joe Piscopo. And okay, Joe, we'll take the heat off you now. Want to remind you, coming up tonight. At 7 o'clock Eastern Time, we will have the NBA Legends Classic. Skip Carey, excuse me, that's 10.05 Eastern Time, 7 o'clock out here on the West Coast, but 10.05 Eastern Time, and also a recap of what you, we hope, have seen live here today, the long-distance shootout and the Slam Dunk Championship. It's tonight at 10.05 Eastern Time. Hi, I'm Rick Barry with three-time MVP Larry Bird. Larry, you've been called the best player ever. How does it feel? You should know, Rick. You were pretty good in your time. What I do know is this year's official NBA catalog is the best ever. Wow, great looking team clothes and accessories. Like this team jacket by Starter and this authentic game jersey. Well, how did the fans get one? Well, for this $1 catalog, credit card holders can call this toll-free number or send $1 to NBA Catalog, Building 73, Hanover, PA. And does everything in the catalog come in all team colors and sizes? Sure. And you can even get this sweater by Cliff Engel and this official Spalding Game Ball. So call 1-800-972-1000 or send $1 to NBA Catalog, Building 73, Hanover, PA. Your dollar will be credited to your first order. Larry, in my book, you're the best. But you still got to work on your free throws. Free throws? Me? Free throws? Bob Neal and Rick Barry with you back at the Coliseum in Seattle, Washington. We hope you've enjoyed our live presentation this afternoon of the long-distance shootout and the slam dunk championship. That long-distance shootout was really something to see this afternoon as Larry Bird didn't start out very strongly, and it looked like that uh, he might not even get into the semifinal round, Rick, but he edged into that, and as you said, once he gets into it, he's really dangerous. Then he makes it to the final round against... Uh, Detlef Shrimp, and once he got into that, Larry Bird shot first and really threw the gauntlet to Detlef Shrimp, and it got down to the final, looking at Artis Gilmore, as he got down to the final round, and Detlef Shrimp needed to hit his final shots, even his last shot, 
to win. This is Detlef Shrimp trying to beat the 16 points that had been scored by Larry Bird for the $12,500, and he needed 16 points out of this to tie. Well, what made it so difficult for Detlef is he got off, as you saw, to such a horrendous start. After Bird popping in those first six shots, it really made it tough for Detlef to try and come back. But he hung in there very tough. As you see, he started finally to warm up a little bit. He goes real strong here from the center position, a spot throughout the competition that was causing problems for the players, as you pointed out, Bob, which I happen to think from the long distance, there's three areas outside. This should be the easiest shot. Shrimp should pop uh, one in there at the end for two more. He goes down to the last two racks, knowing full well that he needs a lot of baskets here to have a chance to catch Larry Bird. And he starts to warm up a little bit, pumps in a couple of them in a row right there, and hits the third one. And he pops the two-pointer. That would have been a big one. And as it went through for him, that gave him a chance on the last rack. And then he comes through with another consecutive shot. And then the miss there. And now he comes down to the last balls. He hits one to make him at 13. Goes to 14. This was for the tie. And, well, that obviously was not the one that we had when we were shooting at the end. I thought this was. But when he shot the last one at the end, he had hit the last two shots. And he pumped the last one in hit the front part of the rim, had it gone in, we would have had a shoot-off. That would have been very interesting to see, because then I think he would have been on an even par with Larry Bird, but as it was, he did a good job to hang in tough for his first competition in the three-point shootout. <laughs> right, that tricked us a little bit. That was from earlier competition with Detlef Shrimp, who did finish second in the competition. Of course, the All-Star game is tomorrow, and the chairman of the boards is with us today, Charlie Neal. Thank you very much. And talking about the chairman of the boards, I'm talking about Moses Malone, Washington Bullets. Ninth All-Star Game appearance. And Moses, does it get any easier or does it get any better? Well, it's getting tough. Uh, you know, for one thing, you know, I'm getting older. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's never going to get easy. And uh, with all the great athletes, it's going to be difficult, you know, for me to keep on making it. But uh, I'm happy to be here. Now, when you talk about uh, what's happening with the league this year and what's happening with the team, th this has been a great weekend, and I'm, I'm sure you've enjoyed it, haven't you? It's been a great weekend. You know, slam dunk, uh, three-point you know, three shots. You know, it's great for the fans to see, see what's really going on. But, you know, what they should do, get some for the big guy, like me, Otis Gilmore, Akeem, Ralph. You know, get a chair on the board, slam them, and break a backboard down, something. Uh, now, now that's maybe an idea you know a couple of years ago Layden the coach of the Utah Jazz he talked about the three-point shootout just when they had the slam dunk and now the three-point shootout is a reality what you're saying could just very well happen when you say something for the guys because the, today the uh, young man from uh, Seattle was the tallest dunker in the game right you, know, you, you really need something for these big guys they're really doing all the work Work for the little guys, and the little guys got to get the big checks. So. Hey, Charlie, Charlie, tell let the big guy get something going. You know, get some. You know, let him come down here and take down floor. Uh, <laughs> uh, go to the backboard, get some rebounds, something. Hey, Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, ask him. Charlie, this is Rick. Ask Rick him Barry wants to ask Tell him something. I want to see he and Akeem and those guys have a three-point shootout. He would like men. to see you, Akeem, and 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 Akeem have a three-point shootout. It'd be great, man. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm telling you, we need it. You know, Otis Gilmore, all the big guys. Let us shoot him sometime. You know. Don't worry about the slam. Let I know you want to be a guard, don't you? Yeah, follow shots or something. We'll do something. Right? I do remember when you came into the NBA, you told the coach you wanted to play guard, and he said, you can play any position you want as long as you stay in the paint. And that's what you're going to Let me tell you something. It's, it's rough, uh, you know, playing guard. But right now, you know, it's something like Michael Cooper. They're shooting three-pointers. It'd be great, but uh, I'm not that great. Okay, here's Michael right here. Michael, the three-point shootout, what happened? You had a little problem in there, didn't you? Well, Charlie, when I first went out there, I was feeling very relaxed, and I didn't, you know, think about anything. And then the second round came, and I actually thought about where I was at and what was going on, and the elbow kind of tightened up on me. But still, it was about fun, and I've had a nice week. It has been a great weekend. Uh, you've got had to be looking forward to $12,000, though. Can you work on that? Do you actually have a chance to work on that? Oh, definitely. We, ready for the competition? Well, uh, up until then, we really didn't because we were playing so many games the last couple of days and that we were trying to work on it whenever we had a chance. But still, it's a thing where you just come out and try to do and try not to think about it. But uh, Larry put on another great show for the yeah. people. He's the defending champ. But we'll be back next year. Okay, good luck to you and the Lakers the rest of the season. Thank you, Michael. Okay, back to Bob Neal. Thank you, Charlie and Michael Jordan, and Moses Malone shooting three-pointers. What if he missed one? You wouldn't want to make him mad. That'd be my only problem with that. As you look at Michael Jordan again from the Slam Dunk Championship, we'll be back with a final word and also a musical tribute to today's activities right after this. Man, skiing sure is fun. You run into lots of nice people out there. Yeah, we ran into Corky yesterday. That's for sure. And afterwards, there's nothing like a warm fire. Oh, I'll see. And a cold door light. Light really tastes great. And it's less filling. And us hot doggers don't like to get filled up. Speaking of hot dogs, where's you go? You! Great seats, hey, buddy! Ah! Ah! Hey, where are all the guys? They're missing all the fun! For great taste, there's only one light beer. Miller Light.
CBS Sports coverage of the NBA All-Star Saturday has been brought to you by Schick, the official razors and blades of the NBA. And by Gatorade, the official thirst quencher of the NBA. And by American Airlines, the official airline of the NBA. Well, the man who's best with the money on the line did it again today in the long-distance shootout. Larry Bird, who had kind of a slow start against the other seven competitors, came from behind and got into the championship round against Detlef Shrimp. They had a coin toss, and we thought Bird had won it, elected to go first to put pressure on Shrimp. We found out later it was just the opposite. Shrimp had won, decided to let Bird go first, and uh, Bird did really put the pressure on him. But Larry Bird wins $12,500. Detlef Shrimp in second place gets $7,500. It was Cooper in third place, and Danny Ainge, who was a replacement at the last minute for Trent Tucker, who was not here today. And the Gatorade Slam Dunk Championships, Michael Jordan, also Rick Barry, coming from behind against the man you said was a dark horse candidate the late entry Jerome Kersey from Portland who replaced Dominique Wilkins got into the finals but really proved no match for Michael well no Michael Jordan really isn't a class by himself uh, as far as this competition is concerned however the man who I think is still the greatest dunker ever was Dominique Wilkins and unfortunately he had to pull out but you can rest assured he'll be back and the thing I love about Dominique is that he loves dunking and he loves doing it for the fans and I think that's why he is going to be one of the most exciting players for years to come in the NBA and of course it'll be great to have Spud back again next Next year and you get those three players going at it and get Kersey to get a little more creative and it could be very interesting next year well Michael Jordan whose home base is called ORD that's O'Hare Field in <laughs> Chicago <laughs> <Very good about laughs> not the stadium here is Air Jordan now about to launch one as he wins today the slam dunk championship and I'll tell you what he better Julius Irving who way back in the ABA days you see his foot just barely over the line when Julius made that famous dunk when he had the big afro hairdo he actually had his heel on the foul line and so Michael Jordan exceeded him as far as the full court running dunk and he also did the real nice double clutch as well i think it was uh, the best dunk that i've seen from long distance so we'll watch it super slow motion on that same move i found out i found out a reason they took one of the points away you'll notice there's supp not supposed to be any hanging appendages and notice his tongue gets out of his mouth there. that was a deduction of a point <laughs> there's the toe just barely <laughs> over the line he was the first player that i've ever seen and look at this there's the move down brings it back in reaches out stretches all the way and dunks it through with a throw. That is poetry in motion, ladies and gentlemen. What a great athlete he is. Do you think that'll sell some basketball shoes? This is not a commercial, <laughs> but I mean... And now, let's look at the long-distance shootout. Here is the man who's best with the money on the line, the pool room hustler, Larry Bird. Look That's right. That. The concentration, the great motion. You can see he does it the same way each time. And the big advantage that Larry Bird have, had over all the other competitors is the fact that he does not shoot the jumping type set shot. He barely leaves the ground. His legs are strong, and he usually remains very strong in the competition. They opened the door with only 13 points in the first round. They should have shut him out. They didn't, and the old pro took care of him. Well, Larry Bird, how many times have we seen him save games as the ball's going out of bounds in the corner, clock ticking down, he grabs it and just nonchalantly pops it in from about 23 feet. Well, he did it today with money on the line. Larry Bird, the winner of the long-distance shootout. Michael Jordan, the winner of the Slam Dunk Championship. And speaking for Rick Barry, Charlie Neal, our entire crew of... We're just so happy to have been able to brought you live today from the Coliseum in Seattle, Washington, the long-distance shootout and the slam dunk championship with Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, going away with the trophies and the cash. Speaking for everybody, this is Bob Neal. So long from Washington and Seattle. Come on, get it. Wait, it's what I needed, man. It's what I needed. All you can do. Now, wait a minute.